This was filmed in front of a live studio audience. <laughs> Today we're working on the good old 350 small block Chevy. Getting the short block finished up. Got a whole bunch of parts here. We're gonna go over them, get this thing together. Welcome back to the ZHP garage. Master Mechanic is has his <laughs> losing his marbles. We're back here on part two, which is what comes after one. Part two of the what's that thing? What's that piece of piece of piece of metal? Small block Chevy 350. Yes, sir. 355 to be exact, because it's 30 over. But some of you guys have been waiting for part two, so here's part two. We are delivering. Still waiting on the heads. Good old heads, but yeah, heads are pretty back ordered. But we can get a lot of it. We're gonna finish up the short block. We can get a lot of it done. Get the oil pan on. Timing okay. cover. All that good stuff. So, let's check it out right now. Let's get started. Let's do it. Yeah, you didn't say, you didn't say break, check, mark, go, whatever your code word is. Mark, go. So we're back here with our little 350 small block we're putting together. We got some, some more parts. Some of these we already had, we showed you before, but we were able to, we got the keyway. That's, that's what stopped, ooh, that's what stopped us last time. So now we're able to get this, get the cam, get the timing chain and everything finished up. So we can get the, we're gonna get the keyways in it. We get the rest of the bolts. We got our ARP bolts here. We only got one in there right now holding it together. So we'll get our cam sprocket, a timing chain on it. Timing cover, I don't remember if we showed. Nice aluminum timing cover. The Felpro gasket. We got a new seal somewhere. We got the seal. We got it. We got it. This isn't the one that's in the ocean though. That's that's a different kind of seal. So we got a seal, we got our got our dampener. This is a used, used dampener, but it's a trick flow SFI. It's race car stuff, man. It's got double keyway. So we gotta make sure to line up to the timing. Um, we got our, our Melling oil pump, our Melling pickup, SFI flex plate. This is off of a, this is used, but a good, good flex plate. Got our new Milladun oil pan we showed. Um, got some ARP flex plate bolts. A decent oil filter. We're gonna have to change the oil pretty quick after, after startup, after break in. So not, not too crazy on the, on the filter because it won't be on there too long. But got an oil filter. We got our adapter. This is stock oil filter adapter. And then we got our um, drive rod. This is a Milladun drive rod. It's got the, the sleeve made on. So if you're on a, a stock one, you just have this little plastic, probably a fancy name, but it's pretty much plastic that would go on top of the stock rod. But because of the high pressure pump, the stock rod, you have the risk of, of breaking the rod. So you always want a hard in one. It doesn't matter because we're running a 350, but if you had a 400 small block because of the bigger main caps, you want to have the relief cut, but it, pretty much everybody does it, so you can you, you use them either way. But So we got a good drive rod, and we got some new hardware for the oil pan. So that's pretty much what we're going to do. We're going to finish the whole shore block. We also have, we can't put it on yet because we don't have our intake, or our heads. But you don't have your intake? Let's, let's try this again. We also have the intake for it already. We picked this guy up from the swap meet from good old Dave Freiberger, the official roadkill uh, intake manifold. It's pretty cool. They milled down the center, though. They're trying to do some sort of test, but... Dave, Dave signed a piece of paper for me saying that it's the official. It's kind of funny, but so yeah, this is the intake we're going to run on it. So once we get the heads, we get the intake on it. We had a sandblasted, but just a stalker. Good, good performer intake. So let's get this thing together. So I'm going to take, I got to take the sprocket back off here. I have the, we got to get the lower crank pulley, lower crank pulley, crank sprocket put on here. So we got to take it back off to get the keyways in there and set it here on a shop towel. Pop this guy back off. Got to put our keyways in there. See, there's two, two, two separate spots. It's not one big one. It's two, two separates. So let's get him started there and skim a little tap down. About like so. Now we can put our sprocket on it. And this is just a, like stock replacement style. So it's a single, single roller. There's no. There's only one mark. You got your one keyway and your one dot. Just line it up. Then we're gonna have to tap it on because when you get back here on the crank, there's a, a little step that it fits, it fits tight back here. So I forgot my little installer that goes over the snout. So I'm just gonna use two hammers. I'm just gonna work it on here. Gently work it around. Evenly, evenly tap it. So now we can put our sprocket on, but we need to put a little lube where it's going to rub on the, on the block here. Put it right here on the back side. Bolts ready here. Put our ARP lube on it. These are ARP, ARP bolts. So we got our sprocket lube. We got our bolts ready. So we need to find our dot. So line up our dots. You got to line up your little keyway and your camshaft here. We're gonna snug them down and then torque them to 25 foot pounds. See that we're perfectly lined up before we torque it. Make sure too, I didn't show it. You see there's some plugs behind the, the cam sprocket here. If you ever have a block machine, make sure all these plugs, there's three of them, 
fact, make sure those plugs are in there. Sometimes the machine shop doesn't put them back in and the customer doesn't know. Big oil leak if you don't have those. They have no oil pressure. So now we're all done here on the, on the front. Everything's torqued and on. And I put a little assembly lube in here, but after I get it all on, I'll dump, dump oil in here and it'll, it'll lube it before, I, before we start it. It doesn't need to be drowned in assembly oil. So now I'm gonna clean off the surface area here where the gasket's gonna sit. Cleaner on a rag. I think this is carb cleaner, but brake cleaner, carb cleaner. Just wipe it down, put the gasket on there dry. Either one or the other. Use a gasket or use silicone. You don't use both. Just line it up on the dowels. See how it kinda, kinda gotta line it up as you put the cover on there. This cover's been sitting around for a few days, so I need to make sure that it's clean on the inside and wipe it, all, wipe it off also. This cover's used, used too. It's gonna have little war scars on it. So we'll do the same thing. We'll get a brake cleaner on here and wipe off the cover. So once it's wiped off, you don't wanna touch it. So we can get a bolt here and we can line up our gasket up here as we put it together. And push it onto the dowel pins. We don't have a timing pointer yet. We gotta get a timing pointer for that dampener. So we're just gonna put all the bolts in there. Then after we measure it, We'll just take the two out and add the dampener or add the pointer to it after the fact. But right now we know it's on top dead center. Their cam's lined up and you can see this, this dampener is double keyed because it was set up for a blower. Got to make sure that when we put it on that we're up, our timing marks are up here. So we're going to use this keyway that's going to go on to the crankshaft like so, because our timing pointer is going to be over here. Put, put the dampener on before we spin the engine over because we know it's on top dead center right now. So we don't put it on the wrong keyway. Then you can't figure out why your timing's all messed up. You gotta watch that when you use when you use them. Um, use use stuff. You gotta make sure that it's gonna work with what you're doing. So I'm gonna torque the cover. These are little quarter inch bolts. So I'm gonna torque them to, to 13 foot pounds. ARP says to do 25. Uh, no, 15. 15 on quarter inch bolts. But these aren't exactly a hardened ARP bolt, so I went a little less. You can do it by hand. I just have the torque wrench sitting here, so just use it. Get them all drawn down first, and then I'll go torque them all. It's all evenly evenly pulled on it. So they're all torqued down now. So now I'm gonna put my my crank seal in it and then put the dampener on it before anything gets moved so I know which way the, the dampener is going to go. Being that this is a used cover, I don't know if there's any imperfections in here that I can't really feel or see from people prying out this, the crank seal or anything. So I, I like to put a little film of silicone around the outside of it and then I'm going to use some trans gel and I'm going to pack in here because this has a spring, a spring um, seal gasket. And I don't want that spring to pop out as I'm tapping it in here. So I, I pack a little trans gel behind it. So as I tap it in, the spring seal stays in there because it's not very exciting when you get it on. You notice that your, your seal popped off and it's hanging down in there and you gotta take it all apart again. So we'll put a little pull on the backside, hold that spring in there. Then whatever's left over, we'll run around the lip here so it's not dry when we first start it up. So now that I got it lubed and packed in the backside there so that spring won't come out, now I'm gonna wipe it, wipe this and I'll put a small film on there and tap it in. And you kind of got to be careful where you touch it afterwards because you don't want the oils from your hands or whatever getting on there. Let's we'll give this a quick wipe. And we'll take our silicone. Let's do a small little film. Let's put a little film around the outside here. Nothing crazy. Just just to fill any imperfections. Parts, parts, putting it in there without touching anything. Eh, the inside I'm not so worried about. It's more the outside. I don't want to, I don't want to touch. We we'll take our hammer and tap it in there. And as it gets down to the silicone, you want to wipe it so you don't smear it everywhere. Just make sure that it's even all the way. Got our dampener already already wiped off here. It's already cleaned out in the center. And I want to put a little bit of silicone in the center of it here to, to seal it on the snout. Get a little film on the finger. And I'll just run it around on the inside here. Just a little, little film, nothing, nothing crazy. So now we know our zero is going to be up top here. So we're going to use this keyway, get it started on there. Then we're going to get our installer and draw it on. So now we have our installer. So we're going to get this into the snout of the crank here. Just want to run this in just, just snug. You don't want to get crazy with it. Get our bearing on here, our nut. Take a little bit of our ERP stuff, put it on the threads, make it happy. We got to hold the installer and run it running on there. So if you didn't have an installer, you'd have to beat on your dampener with a hammer block of wood or whatever. Don't really recommend it because I don't know if you want to buy a expensive trick flow ATI SFI approved dampener and beat on it with a hammer. Could use a longer bolt and use a snout to pull it in, but then you have the chance of ripping the threads out of the end of the crank because when you start grabbing it, it's not on all the way. You're not grabbing all the threads. Better to have an installer. I like this wrench, good ratio. It's one thing bad about the tool. You got a little guy to hold it, a ginormous nut on here. It's not a very good ratio.
Yep. Being that this is an eagle, eagle crank in here, and then an aftermarket dampener, the tolerance is there. I mean, they're right on spec. So this thing's gonna fit super tight. So this is just a stock dampener and stock crankshaft. It would go on a lot easier, but the aftermarket stuff, it's, it's a tight fit. So it definitely helps to have an installer on this thing. You don't, you don't want to beat on your crankshaft that, you know, this is all, you're pounding on this thing, you're just beating on the thrust bearings. That's really something. Well, I guess my installer had one too many installs in it. So I think we got it on all the way though. It's a good thing that the rest of it comes out by hand though. Things on there tight for sure. I get my tool fixed. But I'm pretty sure we'll spin it over here and see. Well, being that our, being that my installer broke, so we're gonna have to get the tool fixed and come back and finish putting the dampener on. But it's okay, we can, we can finish that later. We're gonna go ahead and continue forward. We're gonna get the oil pump on this thing and the drive rod and then get the bottom end sealed up. So now I'm gonna grab, I'm just gonna grab the drive rod. This guy just sits right here, being that it's upside down. And then when you put it, when you flip it over is when it'll push down into the, into the pump. So this is where it would hit because the cap on a 400 has got a bigger main journal. So this is a smaller hole. That's why they have a relief, a relief cut. But that's why, so it clearances the cap. So now I'm gonna grab the oil pump. Being that the oil pump's new and it was in the box, but somehow got a little moisture to it. So it's got a little bit of surface rust here on a couple spots, but I'm gonna take it apart and clean it and everything, give it a prime. So I'm gonna take the bottom the bottom off here real quick. So got the oil pump here, so we're just gonna take it, take it apart. Got the main drive and then the idler for the pump. Just wanna make sure there's no debris in it. And they machined it, it was good, it's all clean. So the surface rust isn't, isn't a big deal, it'll be okay once we get it, get it in there, it's not enough to hurt anything. So I'm just gonna grab some assembly lube, make sure all of our gears are clean. We can put some assembly lube on here and make sure to put it on the bottom here where it rides up against the pump, the pump housing, and also on the shaft where it goes through. Don't want nothing all metal to metal. Won't be happy. It's the same deal, we got assembly lube here on the idler pulley. I'm gonna get it on the top and bottom. So now I'm gonna put it on the engine. I'm gonna make it easier on myself here. Now that we got it, Got it cleaned up. So we got our got our drive rod in here. We're gonna throw this pump on here. Got some ARP lube on our bolt. Then we can finish putting it together, standing up instead of being on the ground. We're gonna torque this guy here, 55 foot pounds. It'll click, it'll click. There it is. So here we have our pickup and our pickup bolts bolts on. The normal stock style just, just press, presses in there. And if you don't tack or anything, it's kind of interesting because it can move. This one here. Bolts into place, it even has instructions on how to install it in case you're wondering. See, read it fast, that's how you do it. All right, <laughs> so, now, so now we're gonna, it's harder to get this out of the packaging is to put it on. There it is. So now we have the the bottom, gonna go on here like, like so, and then this is gonna go in. So we're gonna use this bolt here. So we'll put these these bolts in, these three, hold it on, then we can install, install this and it bolts down here. So we're gonna add a little more assembly lube here to the bottom and in the gear, because you wanna have it have it thick so it primes and sucks right away. We're gonna we're gonna prime this with a primer, but still you want it to get oil pressure as fast as possible. So we're gonna squirt in between here so it has a good amount. When it spins around, it's not dry on the top. Cover on, we'll put this one in, this one in, and this one in. We're not gonna tighten these down yet. It's gonna, just gonna bring them, bring them to snug. Now we can install our little pickup. So this is, this is still a pretty, pretty tight fit here and you don't wanna beat out here, you're just gonna deform it. So you can get a wrench, you can slide it over here and you can tap it, tap it in. So now we got our pickup in all the way. We're gonna put our last bolt in here. We're gonna tighten it all back down. And it comes with a washer. We just put the washer on here to give it a good, good amount of surface area. I'm sorry, our live studio audience is interrupting me. <laughs> so, so now we're gonna wipe off the, we got the oil pump all on it, the pickup. It's all tightened down, torqued. We're all good to go. We already tightened the, torqued the caps. Everything is done here. So now we're wiping off the pan rails and we're gonna put the, we're gonna put the pan gas, or the pan gasket on and the, New oil pan. So like I said, this one's the uh, rear, has a little step in it. It has a step for the for the block. It goes down in there to seal it up around the remain. And then the front has two different two different options. It has a thinner one, thicker one, depending on the depending on what timing cover you have. You can see that this one is a thicker one because you put this guy in here, it's not gonna it's not gonna fill the void. So we don't need that one. So we're using a thick one. This is the only time you can use a little bit of silicone. So you want to put a little bit on the bottom of the rubber. And then in the corner here, you can see you have your timing cover gasket, but there's this little void where 
oil can leak through. So you want to put a little dab in the corner and then run a little oil on both sides of the front and rear gasket, or not a little oil, a little silicone. Did I just say oil? You want to run a little silicone. A little silicone on both sides of the gasket, of the rubber, and a little dab in the corner. That's all, all you're going to use. Just a little film. You see it on there? Don't get, don't get crazy. So now you got to work this guy in here without losing all your silicone. This is going to be a tight fit. These aftermarket covers, they really hold it on there. I think I have a little, little bit off center. I think I need to scoot it that way a little. We're going to get underneath here and try to work it work it over. I'm just going to clean up the silicone on the, on the inside of the lip. You don't want to have blobs of silicone breaking off and getting sucked up in the oil pump and everything. We'll do the same same in the rear. So it's put a, the rear doesn't fit quite so tight because it's factory setup. Put those aluminum covers in the front, really tight. Then you want to put a little dab here to go along. If you remember when you put the cap on it, the anaerobic, in this little corner. So we'll put a little dab of silicone down here to seal the rest of the cap. And we'll put our rear rubber on, about like so. Then we get our two side. And this is just a stock replacement deal, so we're just cork. So the knees are going to slide up underneath, slide up underneath this rubber gasket, like so. Same in the front here. <laughs> slides, slides up in there, just like that. And the same on the other side. It's definitely a lot easier to do this with your engine upside down. Trying to do this underneath the car. Real pain in the butt, everything falls on the ground on you. So I did a little, da little dab of silicone on the corners and then I just, just a little film around the rubber on, on both sides, every corner, front and rear. A little dabber. So now I got, so everything's clean, we're good here. So now I'm gonna set the oil pan on it. Got a nice Milladun kick out oil pan. So we're just gonna slide it, slide it down on here. Go straight down to it. Make sure it stays there for a minute, it's a little slippery. Grab a couple bolts here. Get it started so it doesn't slip everywhere. And on small block Chevys, all the inner bolts are all quarter inch and then the outer four corners are five sixteenths. And on the cork uh, gasket, you wanna be careful not to over tighten it. You can just over tighten the point that the cork just squishes out and breaks up. Careful on, on tightening it down. So I'm just gonna use a little quarter inch drive and I'm gonna start at the center and work my way out here and just snug it down. So I'm gonna go over it a couple times. I got the panel all tightened down. I just did it. You don't really, I, I don't really torque it because of the because of the cork gasket. You just squish it, so I did it by hand. So got to tighten down, and you can see that you got a good a good squish because your silicone. You got a good, even, consistent squish out the whole way around. So that's that's good. So what you what you can do before the silicone dries is get a shop towel or something and come in here, and you can wipe off this extra that's oozing out. So it looks like you know what you're doing. You don't have a big blob of silicone hanging out of there. You can wipe off that extra. You can even come around the whole pan here if you want. Give it a nice wipe before it dries and it looks like it's just some little rubber there. That's all nice and cleaned up now. All consistent. The back here might be a little harder to, to get in there to get to it because of the crank, but you can use a little pocket screwdriver or something, a little screwdriver and come in here and, and get the blob of it off. So now we got the pan done. You wanna make sure to t um, double check your drain plug. This one here is loose. You can see it come hand tight. So before you put it, get it all done, try to fill it full of oil. You wanna make sure Make sure that's tight. So we're gonna tighten that up. Now the oil pan's done. So now we're gonna put the adapter back on here and uh, put an oil filter on it. We're gonna get this thing sealed up. We just have the original adapter for the oil filter. I cleaned it up, it's got some crusties. I mean, it's clean. It just looks like it's it's got crusty stuff built onto it. Burnt onto it, I should say. So you can line it back up the same way. It doesn't matter, you can, you can do it either way, but this is the way it was. Put that back in there and then just use the original bolts that held it down. There we go, we'll grab our oil filter. And then we're going to put a little bit of um, semi lube, a little lubricant on the seal here. Let's get a film on here. Now that I've got a film uh, on the gasket, I'm just going to go ahead and screw the filter on it. I'm not worried about putting oil or anything in here right now because once I flip it over and get oil in the engine, I'll prime it with the primer and it'll pump it through everything so it won't be dry when we go to start it. So there we go. Now the bottom end's all sealed up. We'll flip it around. We're going to go ahead and put the, put the lifters in it. And then we got a little Joey Gibbs um, assembly grease assembly oil that comes with the camp chap to put on the lifters. So we're gonna lube them up. This is like a thick, thick gel oil. So you don't need to get crazy with it, but it helps on the camshaft lobes. So I normally do a heavier coat on the bottom and then just put it on the side and it'll lube it as it goes down. Push it down to the camshaft. Well, goodbye everybody. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video. Putting some more work in. Finish up the short block of the 350. On here on part two. Part two. So in front of a live audience. 
You know what comes after two, right? Go down. Number three. Like, share, subscribe. Come on back. We'll be coming out with number three soon once we get some more parts. Get the, get the, on the heads. Head. Waiting on the heads. And a few other things, too. Come on back. Let's nice aluminum it. heads. All right. See you guys next time.